Alright folks, welcome to the House That Never Sleeps and welcome to a brand new video. And that's right, I don't have to tell you, he's here. What's up? Watch your back. I'm working on this Fender Stratocaster neck here. And it's been clamped up for, uh, well, since you saw the last video. It's actually, it's been three or three days, four days or something. And every day I would come in here and tighten the clamps a little bit more. And I, you know, I just was afraid to turn that truss rod anymore. But I did get it to turn quite a lot more. And I'm going to get you and show you here. But you can see back bow in that puppy now. Can't you see it? <laughs> no, really. If you look at the if you look at the fretboard, along with the uh, two by four, you can see back bow in that neck. Let me back up here a little bit. Maybe you can see it better. Yeah, yeah. I think it's showing up good there. So it's got plenty of back bow in it now. And uh, I'm gonna get you. I say I'm gonna get you. Better him get you than I. <laughs> and bring you over here and uh, show you how I did it, how I managed to do it without stripping this truss rod anymore. That truss rod is rounded off, man. I mean, that uh, you stick a wrench in there. I want to show you right here. Let's see, this is the wrench right here that fits it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I showed you this before, but just for uh, reference, look at this. That's how much play is in the truss rod, the wrench where it goes in there. I can't really hold it in there and do this, but you can see it's got quite a lot of play in it. And I tried everything, man, except ordering uh, different wrenches, all odd sizes and crap to try to get it in there. I got a wrench right here. I'll show it to you in a minute closer. That it, uh, it's uh, a metric size, one size bigger than the, st the standard that fits it. And I ground off and filed off the ends of it, trying to catch it right where it would fit really tight in there. And uh, never did get it to fit tight. I'd always uh, take too much off eventually. And uh, it just didn't work. But I'm going to get you and show you what did work right now. Okay, here's the... Here is the ridge I ground off the end of it. I don't know, you might be able to see where I ground the end of it off at. Yeah, I think you can maybe see it. I tried it on both ends. And I never could, I tried a couple of them. Never could get it right. So what I ended up doing was taking a wrench that it's supposed to be and there again you can see how much play is in that. Okay, I took that and one of these tiny, tiny little micro screwdrivers <laughs> and I thought if I can get that in there with the head so I lined it up. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see to line it up. Anyways, I lined it up with that ridge, just like so. Worked it in there, just like so. And there you can see how much room, how much slack it took out of that. See what I mean? And I was able to tighten the truss. I just tightened up the clamps back here too, tighter. And I also tightened up the, the uh, truss rod by doing this. Actually I had this screwdriver over here on the other side because right there the wrench would dig into it and shove it into the wood. It's not touching the pegboard. So I put it in on the other side of the thing but I'm just doing this so you can see. Actually I'll show you exactly how I did it. I went in from this side and was able to I don't think the wrench is in the hole now. There it is. It helps if you got glasses on. That's sort of the way I did it. Only had to wrench one over here so I had room to turn it. Anyways, it worked. And I turned it, oh man, a good half a turn probably. And uh, as you can see there, I'm going to get you in a minute and bring you over here and show you. Let me just go ahead and uh, back this off a little bit. And I'll turn this around. I'll turn this around this way so it'll lay in a way that you can see the back bow. You know, that'll work, I think. All right, let me get you now and I'll bring you over here and show you. You can, see, you can clearly see back bow in that neck now. Hold on. Now look at the fretboard here. The darkness of the fretboard, the, the back bow in it, as compared to the straightness of the 2x4. 
I think you can see that plainly. It's got a lot of back bow in it. And the truss rod should hold it there, but I need to leave it that way with those clamps on it for another few days. And then I'll, uh, I gotta straighten it out then and do the frets and then put all this uh, crap back on it and put back bow back into the neck so when the owner receives it under string tension, he can loosen the truss rod safely to gain the amount of uh, neck relief he wants. See what I mean? And like I said before, there's the wrench I ground the ends off of, trying to make it fit. And I ended up using the one that did fit, or was supposed to fit, and uh, this little screwdriver. I think this wrench right here fits that too, but it's just looser than this one, I think, if I remember right. I didn't use that when I used this one. And it worked. Like I say, I got a good half a turn on it. If I back off here, I think the more I back off, the better you can see that back bow in that. It's quite a lot, really. And that is how I did it without uh, stripping the head out even more. Let's see if I can hold this up here and uh, let you look at it this way. You see the back bow in that neck? It's got a lot of back bow in there now, and you can plainly see it compared to the 2x4, which is straight. I think you can see that just fine. So, uh, like I say, all I got to do now is just let that set. I didn't have to use any heat. I figured I wouldn't have to, but I didn't have to. All I got to do now is wait. <laughs> just let it set like that for a few days. Keep the stress on it. And uh, that'll help the truss rod to get used to that new position and hopefully hold it in that position under string stress. Like I say, when you put the strings on it and strings it up, tunes it up to pitch, that's going to pull some, some, you know, probably will make the neck straight. And all he's got to do is under string stress, take the right wrench size and loosen the truss rod and measure the neck relief to get it set exactly where it, wherever he likes it at. There's no way I can set it without the guitar body here, you see. So uh, that's the best way that I can think of to do that. And then, uh, like I say, all you got to do is loosen the truss rod, check it every little bit, put a cape on the first fret, note it down here, about the uh, 20th fret or something, and loosen it until measured on 7, 8, and 9 in that area, frets, 7, 8, and 9, until he gets the 10 thousandths or 12 thousandths, whatever he likes to play on. And then, the truss rod should hold it there from then on after you know going through all this stress. I might go ahead and put a little bit of heat on it while it's under stress like that just to you know loosen the glue up and uh, kind of get it used to this new position. Hopefully it'll, it'll hold longer and better. So I just want to make a short video and show you how I did that. Uh, man, he should do it without stripping the rod out any worse than it already is. It's in bad shape man, but he should be able to loosen it just fine. It's tightening is what's <laughs> scary. So uh, Stay tuned. I'm going to give it another few days and we'll do the frets on it. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Watch out for Earl, man. I'm telling you, he's here. I don't know if you guys see him or not, but he's, he's here, definitely here. And I'll see you next, next video. This makes me do horrible things, man. Just horrible, horrible things that you wouldn't even never even dream of. Man, you shouldn't have to go through things like that. It's just horrendous. Randy! Oh God! Not again! Randy! Come here, Randy! I'm out of here. You stay away from me, you creepy. Better him get you than I. <laughs>